Welcome back, fellow learners. Today we are going to dive deep into another fundamental concept in Java programming, inheritance. Inheritance is one of the pillars of object-oriented programming or OOP. If you have ever wondered how to avoid code duplication, reuse and write efficient code, you are in the right place. So let's not waste any time and get started with understanding what inheritance is all about. I'm Mujib. I'm a self-taught software engineer and former instructor. I know how to learn and teach effectively and I'm dedicated to sharing my techniques and experience with aspiring developers like yourself. I was in your shoes not a long ago and I want to reassure you that you're fully capable of becoming a rockstar developer. Let's get started. To take this tutorial, you will need the following. Basic understanding of Java in programming, preferred code editor, and focus, which is the first step. Let's do this. We're going to fully grasp inheritance and Java. Inheritance is one of the principles of object-oriented programming or OOP. As the name suggests, inheritance means inheriting or deriving properties from another class. In Java, we have five types of inheritance, single level inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hierarchical inheritance, multiple inheritance, and hybrid inheritance. In this tutorial, we will only talk about single level inheritance. Imagine you have different types of vehicles like cars, bicycles, and motorcycles. Now, let's say these vehicles share some common features, like they all have wheels and can move, but each type of vehicle has, also has its own special features. Um, inheritance is like passing on the features from one type of vehicle to another, um, like passing on traits in a family. So let's take a car as an example. A car is a type of vehicle and it inherits some features from a general vehicle uh, like having wheels and being able to move but a car also has its own special features like having a roof and doors um, now let's say we want to create a new type of vehicle a track instead of starting from scratch and listing all common features again uh, we can use inheritance the track can inherit the general features of a vehicle like wheels and the ability to move from the general vehicle category it can also inherit specific features from the car like having a roof and doors so in simple terms inheritance is like sharing and passing on uh, features from one type of thing to another making it easy to create new things by building on what we already have ready to see a real example inheritance is an important pillar of object-oriented programming or OOP. So why do we need inheritance? One, for code reusability, the code written in the superclass is common to all subclasses. Uh, child classes can directly use the parent class code. Method overriding. Method overriding is achievable only through inheritance. It's one of the ways by which Java achieves runtime polymorphism. Polymorphism meaning many forms. Abstraction. The concept of abstract where we do not have to provide all details is achieved through inheritance. Abstraction is showing only the functionality to the user. Next, let's start by creating our super or base vehicle class. To create a class, um, press Ctrl Option N, select Java class, um, give it a name, in this case a vehicle, and press Enter. Um, all right, we have our class. Let's go ahead and add our um, uh, common data and behavior. I'm going to make it 
private to pr um, briefly um, explain the concept of encapsulation and getters and setters. So private string um, brand and private, I will make this to be an integer type, a num of wheels or number of wheels. And let's go ahead, give it also a constructor a vehicle and receive the brand also energy type um, number of wheels as parameters here and let's set those parameters to the member variable so brand equals to the brand coming through the parameter and this dot num of wheels equals to the number of wheels and also let's go ahead add our behavior um, system dot out dot print line um, oops uh, Let's go ahead, what's happening? Let's go ahead and add, just starting, simple message. Um, all right, and let's add also stop, although all cars will not have starting and start stopping probably, but let's go with this. You get the idea, um, stopping. All right, now we have our, um, super simple vehicle class let's go ahead head over to our car class from the previous tutorial and have this class to inherit all of the functionality and data from the vehicle class um, to extend we use the extend keyword extends keyword in Java um, as the name suggests it extends functionality and data uh, and then we add the name of the class that we would like to extend from so as soon as we do that, since we are providing a custom contractor here that uh, receives some parameters, now here um, the contractor of this class, child class, is complaining. And that is because uh, when the contractor of this class is being called, we need to also initialize the member variables that um, this class is be, um, initializing through its contractor. So we need to call something in here um, before we set any uh, member variables um, of this child class. We need to call the super uh, method or super function of the um, parent class. And then that is expecting, um, that is going to call the uh, constructor of the parent class. It's going to call this. So this is expecting to parameters or two arguments let's go ahead and pass those arguments um, one is um, brand and one is num of wheels let's go ahead and pass those but where can we get those those doesn't exist we can receive it as as parameters inside of this constructor let's go ahead and receive it maybe at the end or you could receive it at the beginning it doesn't matter brand and add energy um, num of wheels um, oops. integer num of wheels cool now let's head on um, to our uh, main class to test this let's go ahead and create a car uh, let's call it um, Toyota equals to new car and let's pass it the color gray pass it the um, what was the second one? Oh, it tells us here the model. Uh, let's do Highlander, my favorite. And let's drop those two new lines so you can see everything. It's going to overflow the screen. And add our semicolon at the end. Cool. Let's go ahead and add our next one. Is I think the brand. So that will be um, Toyota and the third one four number of foot wheels cool now let's go ahead and uh, try to access now um, since we have the start stop stop um, methods being inherited from the parent class we no longer need to add those here um, so that is a code um, reusability or reusing code so let's go ahead and use the dot notation to access the properties of the Toyota object. So as you can see, we have access to uh, four. We do not have access to uh, brand and number of wheels because we made those private. Those are only accessible inside of this class. And those are access modifiers. 
Um, so let's go ahead and start this car and run this program control R it is starting although the car doesn't have those methods but it's being inherited from the vehicle class so this is child class uh, or um, the child class and parent class or base class all right let's create another class um, type of car uh, let's call it um, so Nissan equals to a new car and the color let's do red oops and uh, let's do um, I don't know I would just call it Nissan I can't remember any uh, Nissan, mo Nissan models at the moment and the brand also Nissan uh, and number of wheels also let's do four and break this to new lines too so you can see everything uh, cool and let's go ahead oh, I added some white space at the end of this okay cool and this one let's go ahead and call the start method on the Nissan 2 dot start and run it that one is also uh, inheriting uh, all the properties and behavior. Now let's go ahead and add some getters and setters to this class so we have access to those two properties and we can uh, set them if we need to change them anytime. Um, so setters and getters and setters are just normal um, methods um, just like, like those ones that does some functionality um the only different is in the naming um so let's go ahead create one for the brand first so we're going to um get the brand so that means we're the brand is string so we're going to return a string and we call it get brand because it's going to return the brand no parameters and we're going to return this dot brand or you could skip to this keyword java will know what you're referring to and then also, um, this one will not return anything because we're going to set the brand um, and it's going to receive a parameter so we can set it, set the value of the brand to. Uh, let's also call it brand. And in this case, we need to use this keyword so to differentiate between the member variable and the parameter. All right, so now we can go to the main class and let's go ahead, change Toyota's um number of wheels maybe for example toyota dot um set oh well, i only set the brand um created getters and setters for the brand so i'm just going to change that let's just call it toyo and run that oops we did not do anything with that brand and this time let's use the getter um toyota dot gate brand and run that we get Toyota. Cool. Um, one cool way to create those getters and setters without typing them all for each member variable is to right click or you could uh, look up um, the um, the um, shortcut. Um, we can right click and, cl and then click generate and then getters and setters and select the member variables that we like to create getters and setters for and click OK you get your getter setters for all of your member variables or the ones that you have selected. Um, another thing I want to talk about is the uh, concept of um, polymorphism, many forms. Um, I know at the beginning of this tutorial I uh, mentioned it briefly. Um, is That is, so we do have the start and stop method and this um, v, um, uh, main vehicle or super class um, we can head to the car class and provide our own um, implementation of the start class or override it in other words um, so let's but it has to have the same signature void start and then we can provide our own implementation or um, the car implementation of the start and this is called overriding. Uh, so let's do this. Let's do this dot um, get brand. 
uh, which brand is it starting? Let's do this dot git brand plus space starting dot 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 and then rerun this program. This time we will see Toyota or Toyo because we changed it is starting and Nissan is starting because those two both are type of car and we overrode the um, the start method on this. Um, another thing is there is an annotation called at override. It's a good thing to it's a it's met, metadata uh, for Java. Um, just telling Java that we are overriding a method from the parent class. Um, all right, cool. Um, that is um, polymorphism encapsulation. We encapsulated um, data here. Um, and the only way other classes are able to uh, access them are via getters and setters. They cannot change them directly. And in the getters, the benefit of getter setters are that you can validate data here. So before you set uh, the brand to the um, brand member member variable, you can do like a validation if this dot brand if brand that coming through the and that is coming through the parameter doesn't equal to null then we're going to go ahead and set it to the member variable or it could do other stuff um, but just an example um, all right uh, please let me know if you would like to know more about um, um, encapsulation abstraction polymorphism um, those are all um, um, pillars of object-oriented programming. When it comes to coding, one of the best ways to remember and get better at what you have just learned is to let your fingers dance at the keyboard. So I want to challenge you and give you a homework. Come up with a superclass and subclass or child classes to demonstrate inheritance. Use method overriding to provide child class implementation of an action. Figure out if base class or child classes method is being called by logging a message to the console. Let me know in the comments what else would you like to learn from me or if you would like to learn more about OOP or inheritance. See you next time learners.